All right, hello. Uh, so next, let's talk about the heat effects of mixing. And so first I wanna start by, we just showed that the excess enthalpy is equal to delta H of mixing. Okay. So let's first go back and think about what delta H of mixing corresponds to. All right, and so we were talking about property changes upon mixing. If I imagine I have a binary system, so say I have a beaker of pure component one at T and P, I'm going to mix that with a beaker of pure component 2, also at T and P. And I'm going to form a final mixture composed of component 1 plus component 2 at the same temperature and pressure. All right, so the idea is I'm mixing two pure component systems to form a final mixture at the same temperature and pressure. Okay, so delta H of mixing. Okay is defined as H, the enthalpy of my final mixture, this beaker, minus, in this case it would just be X1, H1, plus X2, H2. If you were to write it in its extensive form, okay, so if you were to multiply by N, all right, delta H of mixing total, this would be the total enthalpy or extensive enthalpy of my final mixture, minus, so this would become N1 times H1, right, or just H1 total. This would become N2 times H2, which would just be H2 total, all right? So essentially it's just the difference in enthalpy or extensive enthalpy of my final mixture relative to the extensive, the sum of the extensive enthalpy of those two pure component systems I'm, I'm mixing together. So delta H of mixing, right? So this would be the, you know, intensive uh, per mole equivalent of this. Okay, and so this delta H of mixing, that's gonna be related then to the amount of heat that needs to be added to or removed from my system um, to maintain mixing at constant temperature and pressure. Okay, so delta H of mixing corresponds to the heat that needs to be added or removed from my system uh, for mixing at constant temperature and pressure. All right, for mixing at constant T and P. We just showed that HE, my extensive enthalpy, is equal to delta H of mixing. Okay, so delta H of mixing corresponds to the heat that needs to be added to or removed from my system to mix at constant temperature and pressure. HE is my extensive enthalpy. Okay, so HE okay, corresponds to the enthalpy of my final mixture relative to the enthalpy of an ideal solution at the same conditions, okay? So HE would correspond to the enthalpy of this mixture relative to that of the ideal solution equivalent, okay? So delta H of mixing, which is equivalent to HE then, is gonna to correspond to the heat that needs to be added to or removed from my system to mix at constant temperature and pressure. HE, tells us the enthalpy in excess of that of an ideal solution at the exact same conditions, okay? So we went through a similar exercise um, when we talked about delta H of mixing, but now hopefully that we have this HE component in addition to delta H of mixing, it can come to a, a full light. So remember before we said that, you know, our, our three different scenarios we could have for delta H of mixing is first is delta H of mixing is positive, okay? So, you know, what does that mean? So if delta H of mixing is positive, okay? So remember, Q is positive when heat's added to my system, Q is negative when heat's removed from my system. So if delta H of mixing is positive, that means heat has to be added to my system to mix at constant temperature and pressure, okay? So delta H of mixing greater than zero would correspond to endothermic mixing. Okay, endothermic mixing. So heat needs to be added to my system to mix at constant temperature and pressure. Okay, put differently, if I think about, uh, say, this equation for delta H of mixing, this tells me that the enthalpy of my mixture is greater than the molar average of the enthalpy of uh, the two pure component systems I'm mixing, or extensively, the extensive enthalpy of that final mixture 
is less than the sum of the two beakers I'm mixing together. Okay? We call it endothermic because delta H of mixing is greater than zero. The enthalpy of my final mixture is greater than right, the molar average of those two pure component systems I'm mixing. Okay? Now this would also correspond then to an HE is greater than zero. Okay, so endothermic mixing, you can think in terms of delta H of mixing greater than zero, QS be added to it. It would also tell us that HE is greater than zero. So now with HE greater than zero, that says that the enthalpy of our mixture is greater than that of an ideal solution at the same conditions. Okay, all right, so what is an ideal solution? An ideal solution is a system in which all of our intermolecular interactions are exactly the same. So if the enthalpy of my mixture is greater than that of an ideal solution in which all of our interactions are exactly the same, do you think that would result from favorable or unfavorable interactions? Well, the key is it would result from unfavorable. If you think back to, was it chapter one when we talked about you know, this Leonard Jones potential? You know, if I just think about enthalpy of vaporization. Okay, enthalpy of vaporization is always positive. All right, why? Because the enthalpy of my liquid phase is always going to be less than the enthalpy of my vapor phase. Right? Liquid's going to be less because I have molecules at close distances interacting very strongly. In a vapor phase, they're very far apart. They're interacting very weakly. Okay? So remember, the stronger the interaction, the less, or essentially you could think maybe the more negative um, the enthalpy or internal energy. Okay? So the fact that delta or HE and delta H of mixing is greater than zero, it's kind of like you know, enthalpy of vaporization. All right, in that, in this mixture, the interactions are going to be less favorable um, than an ideal solution in which they're all the same. Okay, so H E greater than zero, right? We can think of then in terms of being um, unfavorable interactions. And I guess I shouldn't say unfavorable. The word I should probably use is less favorable, right? less favorable than you know, that ideal solution, which they're all the same, um, or uh, in the pure component limit, all solutions approach, or are you know, ideal solutions. They approach ideal solution behavior. So I should probably say less favorable interactions. And so this is gonna come up throughout this chapter, and, and thinking in terms of these ways can be useful. Because again, you know, any insight you can gain in terms of what's happening at a molecular level in your system can pay dividends in terms of helping you design more efficient separation processes, right? Or just having some understanding of what's going on in your system to better design process equipment, separation processes, you know, whatever it may be. So here, right, I could uh, do some simple experiments to measure delta H of mixing as a function of composition, right? And use that to gain insight in terms of what's happening at a molecular level. Right, that's great. That's valuable. Okay. All right. So that's um, he is greater than zero. The other scenario is delta H of mixing less than zero. Okay. So delta H of mixing is less than zero. What does that mean? Okay. That tells me that the uh, enthalpy of my final mixture is less than the molar average of those two pure component systems that I mix together. Okay. Or you know, if I think in terms of extensive, okay, the enthalpy of my final mixture is less than the sum of those two beakers um, that I mixed together to form that final mixture. Okay, so the enthalpy of my final mixture is less than that of the beakers I, I mixed together. Okay, and so if I think in terms of this, of, in terms of heat, the heat that needs to be added or removed to my system, okay, so here I'd have a negative Q that means heat's being removed from my system. So we call it exothermic mixing. Okay, so in exothermic mixing, the enthalpy of my final mixture is less than um, that of the two beakers I mixed together to form that final mixture. And now if I think in terms of intermolecular interactions, okay, this would tell me that HE is less than zero. So the enthalpy of my mixture is less than that of an ideal solution at the same uh, conditions. And so that would suggest to me then that I must have favorable, you know, or more favorable interactions. Okay. So this must correspond to then more favorable interactions, if I can spell it right, more favorable <laughs> interactions 
in that mixture right, to result in a lower enthalpy. Okay. The third scenario we had is that delta H of mixing was equal to zero. Okay, so when delta H of mixing is equal to zero, Q is equal to zero, we call that an athermal solution. Okay, so no heat needs to be added to or removed from my system. So this would correspond to, you know, HE is equal to zero. And so, you know, the enthalpy of my mixture is the same as that of a corresponding ideal solution um, at the same conditions. Uh, and so, you know, you don't have interactions that are less favorable or more favorable. They're just the same. Okay, cool. Okay, and so that's uh, our discussion on heat effects of mixing.